Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pumpkin conchas. That's right, we're doing a seasonal twist on this famous Mexican sweetbread, which I think would work absolutely perfectly at any brunch or breakfast during holiday season, also known as pumpkin season. But if you did want to make these and it wasn't pumpkin season, that's not a problem because these are also basketball conchas. Go Dubs! So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a fairly simple dough, which I'm gonna start with some pure pumpkin puree, which is the same thing we use to make pumpkin pies. And the only ingredient listed on the can should be pumpkin. And then to that, we will add some warm milk, some melted butter, some white sugar, one egg yolk, a little vanilla extract, plus of course, a little bit of salt. And then we'll go ahead and dump in our flour and then we'll finish up with some active dry yeast. At which point we'll pop on our dough hook and we will knead this until a soft, very smooth, slightly elastic ball of dough forms. And yes, we usually do bloom the yeast in some warm water or milk first, but if you have the time, you really don't have to. And the only real difference is the dough is gonna take a little longer to rise, which was fine for me this time because it was really dark outside and raining. So I was kind of stalling and I didn't care if my dough was gonna take an extra hour or so to rise. And of course, as usual, you can definitely knead this by hand, which will probably take you about five or six minutes. Depends on how ripped your arms are. But bottom line, like I said, we want to end up with something very smooth and soft and supple and slightly elastic, which is exactly what I've achieved here. And what we'll do is form that into a nice smooth ball. And we'll place that back in our mixing bowl that we've lightly greased with some butter. And by the way, the little bit left in whatever you melted your butter in will totally be enough to get that job done. And that's it, we'll cover this. And we'll let that rise in a warm spot for a couple hours or until it doubles in size. And while we are waiting, we can move on to make the topping, which will begin with equal parts all-purpose flour and powdered sugar, plus a very small pinch of salt, and a few of what people like to call pumpkin spices, which for me in this case are cinnamon, allspice, and nutmeg which I followed with a little touch of vanilla. And then we'll finish this up by mashing in some soft room temperature butter. And that is pretty much all there is to this. We will simply spatulate this mixture until a moldable dough forms. And once that butter has been distributed and it starts to come together, you could just get in there with your hand, which is probably a little faster. But since I have to move tripods and cameras, I'm just gonna stick with the spatula. And eventually I got where I needed to be. And then at this point, if you want, we can add one highly optional ingredient, which would be a drop or two of orange food coloring, and we can mix that into the dough to make these look a little more pumpkin-like and or basketball-like. Go Dubs. And yes, they make orange food coloring these days. Right back when I was a kid, we had to mix a drop of yellow and a drop of red. And we also had to walk to school uphill both ways. But anyway, if we want, we'll go ahead and color that up. And once that's looking and feeling exactly how we want, we will divide that into six equal portions and then roll each portion into a ball and place it on a parchment lined baking sheet or plastic lined. It really doesn't matter. And then once that's set, we'll take a piece of plastic or in my case, a used sandwich bag and we will place that over the top and give it a pressing down with something flat and heavy like this meat pounder or the bottom of a glass or measuring cup. And we will flatten those out to about an eighth of an inch. And that's it after mine were pressed. I wasted a minute kind of trying to smooth out those edges, which really isn't going to make any difference. But I did it anyway, because I couldn't help myself. And then the last step here, we will take the tip of a knife, and we will attempt to make some kind of pumpkin-like design, which I did by making that small cut on the top, followed by five strategically placed slices. And I don't think we want to go all the way to the edge, since that can cause a design to come apart. And in hindsight, I probably should have stayed even farther away from the edges. And I should mention, usually this topping is placed on the bun first, and then it's scored using a special tool, which gives the top kind of a seashell design, which is where the name concha comes from. But as much as I like seashells, I really wanted these to look like pumpkins. But anyway, the point is I thought I'd have more control over the design doing it on the pan like this, and then placing them over my dough already cut, which may or may not have been a good idea. So I went ahead and did all six. And then once done, we'll go ahead and pop this in the fridge so that that butter firms up, making these easier to handle. And that's it, once our topping's set, 
and our dough is eventually doubled in size and hopefully looks like this, we will go ahead and transfer that onto our work surface and we will degas it, which is just fancy baker speak for pressing out the air. And once we do have that flattened into some kind of round disc, we will take our bench scraper and divide that into six equal portions, which I always pretend to do by eye. But then when I turn the camera off, I use the scale so they're exact and everyone thinks I'm really good at making them uniform. But anyway, once cut, we'll go ahead and roll that into a smooth ball by rolling it around on our surface, cupped under our hand. And we really want to do our best to get a nice smooth skin over the top. And that's it, we can transfer those onto a Silpat line baking sheet. And once we place those down, we'll give them a nice pressing down to flatten them out a little bit. And that's it, once our dough's been panned up and palmed down, we'll go ahead and take out our cool, hopefully firm topping out of the fridge. And we'll carefully center one over the top of each bun. Oh, and I should mention, a lot of people put an egg wash on the dough first, which apparently is supposed to hold this stuff on better. But I've never done that, and it's never been a problem. But since I was going for something to look like a pumpkin, I decided to try to make this a little thicker, with just a few cuts, which ended up making them heavier, which means they're going to have more of a tendency to slide down the bun as it bakes, which as you'll see did kind of happen. Oh, and let me freeze the action right here. Since at least one time in every video, I do something that after I watch it, I go, what was I doing? All right, I place this last piece of topping on and then decide I needed to turn it so it would match all the other ones, but it was already matching all the other ones and I ended up turning it the wrong way. And if you're wondering why, I would also love to know that. But anyway, once these are topped, we're gonna let them proof for about 40 to 45 minutes or until they just about double in size. And I guess we could cover them, but that topping kind of protects the dough, so I usually don't. And about 45 minutes later, mine looked like this. And you can see as that dough rose, it kind of stretched our topping apart. And I was a little bit worried about the spacing. But anyway, at this point, there's no going back. And you can't really make any adjustments. But what we can do is pop these into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Or until they look like this. Oh yeah. Those kind of look like pumpkins, right? Most of them do, or at least a couple, right? That one does for sure. So yes, using a thicker topping and making fewer cuts did cause a couple issues, which is why I was trying to turn this one to its best side. But then I realized it didn't have one. But you know what? Overall, for a first attempt, I thought these looked fine. And how upset am I supposed to be? I'm about to eat some pan dulce. And then once these come out, I usually let them sit on the pan for about five minutes before transferring those onto a cooling rack where we should theoretically let these cool down to room temp, which is definitely what I theoretically did. But anyway, I let those cool down, allegedly, before grabbing one of the better looking ones so I could see how I did. And yes, that topping gets very crisp, as you're about to hear. And then usually I just bite or tear into these and it's hard to see the crumb. So this time I actually grabbed a knife and cut in so you could get a much better look at the texture, which I would say is very brioche-like. But what makes these so magical is the contrast between that soft, barely sweet bun and that crispy, much sweeter topping, which in this case is scented with those pumpkin spices, which not surprisingly pairs perfectly with that little bit of pumpkin in the dough. So above and beyond a few minor appearance issues, I was very, very happy with how these came out. And my only real regret is that I didn't enjoy these as God intended, which would be eaten next to a nice big cup of coffee. But you know what, it was too late, and I didn't want to be kept up, since I would have been forced to watch late night TV, and there's really nothing worse. And no, you do not need to put the pumpkin puree in the dough. All right, I was just trying to make these even more pumpkin-y. Or you could just make up the difference with more warm milk and maybe another pinch or two of flour. And along the same lines, feel free to spice up that topping any way you want, including no spices. And if this seems like something you'd enjoy and that would be fun to do, I would highly suggest doing an image search for these, since there are hundreds and hundreds of different great designs you can apply. So feel free to get creative. I mean, you are after all the man of La Mancha, of your pumpkin concha. And yes, I'm sure they do have windmill designs. But whether you do your own thing or make them like we did so they look like pumpkins and also possibly basketballs, go doves. Either way, I really do hope you give these a try soon.
So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.